Hello, friends. So I come here to welcome you all to a culture. In first year, when I began my career in philosophy, I had a discussion with one of my professors. I asked him, you know, so what do philosophers do? He replied, well, Josh, philosophers kind of write papers for other philosophers. I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. If philosophy is not directly related to society, there's a problem. Philosophy's standard definition is the love of wisdom. But what is the source of wisdom? I'm going to hypothesize that answer can be found in another question. What ought the role of the philosopher be in society? We expect the philosopher has some moral duty to share their wisdom with society. Plato said this in the Allegory of the Cave, quoting Book 7, to illuminate the degree in which our nature may be enlightened or unenlightened. Plato was talking about a means to be free. So the social philosopher is the true philosopher, for they recognize two things. First, they recognize the wisdom that is gained in teaching others, the act of teaching. They also recognize the wisdom in sharing wisdom with others. It's a twofold event that's happening at once. So wait a minute, social philosopher, let's define this thing. First, this individual must have some merit of wisdom. You need to have something to share. The saying goes, there's no fool like an old fool. Secondly, the moral philosopher must accept the moral duty to share their wisdom. And finally, they have to be able to apply social science to real-life situations. There exists a situation which applies to all of us. That is, the need for well-being. Well-being meaning the optimal state for human development and flourishing. Now, I'm up here talking about the social philosopher. That's where that need is going to be met. The social philosopher can stand up to the plate. In 2009, I founded the Lakehead University Philosophy Academy, which is founded upon the thesis that social scientific awareness is a means to sustainable well-being. Okay, that's cool. There are four conditions that we apply to this well-being laboratory. One, we include all levels of socioeconomic status and demographics to exchange, understand, and learn ideas. Secondly, we focus on having a variety of belief systems to ensure that there is a rich perspective within the environment. This way, we avoid things like in-group, out-group bias. Thirdly, we agree, we agree on a standard of reason. That way, we have a reliable medium of communication. And finally, most importantly, positive emotional exchange as, a, as an outlet for discussing oppositional views. The environment demands that you develop certain skills when placed under these conditions. These skills, or tools, are a window into the mind of the other, as well, a reflection to yourself. Emotional intelligence is the ability to identify your own state and the state of another. This is very important when we're discussing sensitive issues like religious conflict. Communication, discussion through the spectrum of simple to abstract ideas. We want to avoid the problem that academia faces, that of the ivory tower. In some way, academics are disassociated from society, which is the original problem I identified. Thirdly, respect. Come on, that's pretty important. We can see that. We have to differentiate between the person and the idea. This is very important when we're discussing, again, sensitive issues. We do not want to attribute or dehumanize an individual because of the discussion that they're raising. They might not be, it's not their identity, it's just what we must talk about. Self-reflection, the ability to be aware of your thoughts, attitudes, and ideas. 
so that you can modify and adapt to your needs, the needs of your social situation and the environment. Critical thinking, to not fall heir to logical fallacies or cognitive and social bias. And finally, developing our moral compass, so we have an awareness of ethical dilemmas that uh, spans beyond our own cultural limitations. Bringing things back to center, I invite all of you to recognize your capability and essence as philosophers, and I ask you to join me in becoming social philosophers.